Uh, great. Uh, thanks, Johan. Uh, uh, Open Source Antibiotics Consortium, uh, Tuesday, 9th of April. Uh, Johan, thank you for recording. Uh, Matt's uh, double booked uh, with a uh, post uh, break, so that's fine. He said he'd be along in about 30 minutes. So we'll uh, kick off at our end. Yeah. Um, we've got some uh, enzyme data to share. And then after that, if anyone else has got something while we're waiting for Matt, then please let us know and we can get started. Mm -hmm. So uh, any more ado, I'll uh, share screen. And hand over to Adrian. Hi. So um, uh, what I'm going to do is update um, our work on some of the multi-targeting compounds that we got from the Atomwise library. Um, and if you remember, we had a fair amount of success with uh, identifying molecules which at a single concentration of half millimolar targeted Mercy, D, E and F. And since that time, um, essentially, uh, we've been playing catch up, uh, working out the IC50s of these compounds. Um, however, since the last meeting, um, because we all always have to make the substrates for these, a lot of effort has gone into restoring our stocks of merligase substrates, which I'm pleased to say we're now getting back to capacity, uh, which means that we're for, for, for things where we have special requests for Mercy, for example, we can now accommodate. So, um, at the end of last year, we identified a large number of compounds from the enamine library um, that targeted uh, Mercy, D, E, and F, and Mercy seemed particularly um, sensitive to inhibition and we identified a panel of 20 atom-wise compounds, uh, which um, exerted greater than 50% inhibition at uh, half millimolar. And at the moment, we're, we're working our way through those. And this is what we're going to talk about. The compounds that we've characterized further with respect to dose responses are the ones which are highlighted in green. So, um, and uh, they are the top eight most potent. Um, the way we, uh, I'll just include the, data, the the methodology for those who are interested. Um, we were using a continuous assay uh, where we follow phosphate release um, and we have a coupling system which links that to a, a fluorescent output. So, <clears throat> um, the most potent, um, the eight most potent compounds, we now have IC50 data for. Um, in all cases, we have, um, well, well, in seven cases, we have double digit micromolar IC50s. Um, and that's consistent with the original data at half millimolar uh, single point concentrations. The L coefficients for many of these are great, substantially greater than one, which may mean that the interaction is not simply simple saturation, but that really requires further detailed investigation. The IC50 curves themselves uh, for these eight are here. Um, the compounds I've labeled in red uh, we also have IC50 data for MERDI and E. Uh, the compounds labelled in blue, uh, we have IC50 data uh, with MER E, so it, it targets most MER E and MER C, but not MER D. And the brown structures, um, they are MER C inhibitors with, um, again, that they, they target MER D. And the single black structure, which is OSA 001132, singly and only targets mercy. So <clears throat> there is, to my untrained eye, some form of structural activity relationship emerging from this. Um, we're going to be looking at the uh, remaining 12 compounds, which is slightly weaker, 
and that might give us a bit more granularity with regarding regarding any sort of structural activity relationship which can, we can derive from from this data and the data are going to be posted on um the github website so you can uh, peruse at your leisure finally um one last detail about controls and compounds so with MERS-C, one thing that we've noticed is with regard to ATP binding and its use as a substrate, the substrate inhibition kinetics indicate that more than one molecule of ATP can actually bind to MERS-C. Um, and if you look at the inhibition of MERS-C by ADPCP, which is basically ATP with the oxygen between the beta and gamma phosphorus atoms replaced by methylene, <clears throat> there are clearly two KDs in the interaction. Um, if we now look at, for example, some of uh, Yuhang's uh, compounds, um, so the uh, pyrazola pyrimidines, uh, which are ATP competitive, they are entirely monophasic. There's only one single interaction that we can detect. Um, <clears throat> Why there is a discrepancy is an interesting question, and I'm not quite sure what the answer is, but it is worthy of some thought. And if anyone has any ideas, uh, well, please do tell. And that really is it for the moment. Thank you. Uh, anyone has any questions for Adrian, please say. Um, I did actually just have one question. Could you go back to the structures where you were showing the IC50 curves, the sure. previous one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I was just looking at the two bottom ones, 1159 and 1160. Yeah. They're kind of interesting. Is 1159 supposed to be black? I remember when you said 1132 was the only black structure. Is 1159 indeed black? Sorry, I beg your pardon, it is. Okay, because that, that's kind of interesting when you compare those two structures that they're basically replacing the sulfur for the oxygen yeah. as conferred a loss of MER D. Although, I don't know, because then 1167. What, what, what do you mean has black? A, the color of the structure is black. It's not colored. It's not, it's not easy to see. Right. This is black. This is brown. Brown. Red. Yep. Blue. <laughs> yeah. <I apologize>. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I, I take probably that. told you before I'm I'm uh colorblind. So that's what I was like oh. I, I thought you were saying like the compound itself was black. I was like, what? Yeah. Like, was it was a dye or something. All right, sorry. Go go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I take I take it back because then I saw eleven sixty seven, so I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Bart. Um uh, that was you know, just not, not very helpful. Perhaps, okay. perhaps we'll put the words black next to it next time. <laughs> just add, add a symbol. Add a symbol. It's not Stars, that it's, I, can, I can see it being black. It's the other ones. Like, I didn't realize there was like red and brown. Those I certainly can't see. I can uh, see the blue, the blue one I can see pretty good. Okay. 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 Um, but um, that doesn't, that's fine. That's doesn't. So. Uh, right. Uh, we, 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 we will. Get and investigate appropriate analysis. <laughs> I suppose if I go back, it's not going to help much. But um, <laughs> the, one, the, the one, the one thing that I, I, I would like to sort of emphasise that if you look at the data as a whole, and we haven't fully interrogated it with respect to ice dose response curves yet, um, but they are, again, to my untrained eye. Um, there are certainly motifs within there that appear to be repeating. So yep. there is something to be extracted from this. He said enigmatically. <laughs> no, I do I do see some common scaffolds, you're right. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what all of the data looks like when it yeah. washes yeah. out and we'll see what it says yeah. then. Yeah, because we have to finish off basically those compounds there, those hits we got with Mer F as well. Mm -hmm. And the final thing that did, did occur to me is that the comment, one 
if there is such commonality, then it will be interesting to know what the B uh, thinks of these compounds, because uh, it could well be that we're chasing the wrong binding site, because the other thing that is entirely common, of course, is the uridine binding site to everything. So I think that in, in while we're waiting for Johann's compounds to arrive, so we can chase after the, the, those a, those those AZ multi-targeting binding opportunities that may exist. Uh, I think Adrian was going to go and have a quick look at that while Johann's compounds are being finalized. Yeah. Yep. Just see if we can tease out the you know near B lack of ATP binding and see what happens. Okay. There should be there should be um, probably about half a dozen compounds coming from northeastern as well, but we're waiting until the end of uh, the semester, so a couple more weeks, so that we can get them all together in one shipment. Okay, yeah, that's good. Um, we have a, another person joining the team, but I, I, I had well, I hope they were going to start May the first, but they're not going to start till August the first, um, so uh, we're still short of pairs of hands. <laughs> They'll be coming. Um, the only good news for us is we can use that money to buy a nice 96 well, 384 well multi pipetting system instead of their salary. So. I mean, if you can find a silver lining. Yeah, we've got to yeah. find it. We're looking into it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. Anything else from anybody? No. Cool. Um, does anyone want to say anything about structures? I know Laura doesn't want to say anything about structures. Well, uh, I don't have any updates yet. I'm still waiting on some MIRC experiments for E. coli MIRC. Um, and I am sending some crystals on Thursday, but I'm not very confident on them. So, <laughs> and then hopefully I'll be sending in a couple of weeks new crystals for E. coli MIRC in the presence of some. Um, AC, AZ uh, derivative compounds, which are more potent, and see if uh, our actual problem is just getting the potency good enough so we can actually see them on crystal plates, uh, on crystal structures. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm also, I have a meeting book with um, uh, Phil Stansfield here in um, Warwick. Uh, to do some docking with the new Rosetta Alpha Fold uh, program and do some molecular dynamics as well after that. Uh, so in case we didn't, we never get at this point any of the initial structures, we can look at that and see if it gives us a little bit more of information and not go blind, completely blind, basically. Oh. Um, so that's ongoing. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing we, we're, we're trying to do is we're getting quotes at the moment for trend, uh, several transition state analogues. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to come out at about £12,000 each. Uh, yeah. I've said we'll choose two uh, mm -hmm. rather than four. And uh, we'll get two of those. And hopefully they'll be potent enough to force that jellyfish into a structure. So, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see yeah. how that goes. And I'm also trying to crystallize some tuberculosis with like as well. Yeah. Um, anything from your side, Bart? From yeah, so Scott can be here, and and that's all. Well, that works happening in Kansas, so I don't have too much visibility. But he did send me an email last night, and I'll just I'm gonna paste his paragraph into the chat. I don't know if that makes it into the meeting known at minutes for the recording, but um, it looks to me like he's trying to do some of the um. Soak in, soak out experiments where you create a crystal and try to outcompete it with the inhibitor. What's E. coli MRD? I hope they get some some data sets for that. So and uh, yeah, so they'll be at the. Hmm. So it looks like they're going this week to the synchrotron to, to yeah. see the results from that. So, um, yeah, oh, goodness yeah. me, that would be brilliant. Yeah, if we get something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been so painful, it's been very painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At this end.
Yeah, great. Uh, please pass on his thanks, and uh, mm -hmm. and 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 if Scott can make it or schedule into his diary to be here, that would be you know for future ones. I think yeah. even better. Okay. Not even better. Yeah, he said he's got a. Sounds like he's got a class. Um, what does that make it? It's like an eight a.m. class, Kansas time. I get or something. So. I might email him just to ask how did he go. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll just if he gets something, he's pretty good about letting you know. Um, yes. Great. That's great. He like he likes giving good the good results. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you don't get any end results, is you don't know what to report. You know. Right. If you're still trying things, it's like, well, I don't get anything now, but <laughs> so I understand it. <laughs> That's great. Okay. okay. Um, there's no more no more biochemistry, no more structural stuff. Uh, chem any chemistry input uh, from anybody? You and you want to say a little bit more that you were saying to us at the beginning about your Yeah, sure. Uh, let me share my screen. Can you guys see it? Or is that just more? Uh, yeah, so basically I'm working on this uh, Pyrazole Pyramiding series. And currently, uh, we have sent this compound previously to uh, Adrian Laura, and but we didn't get the IC50 because I didn't send enough. Uh, then this time I'm sending these compounds uh, for IC50s only uh, uh, as a repetition. And uh, also its pyridi uh, pyridinium derivative has uh, just been made this Monday. <laughs> uh, well, well, back down the fractions and to see if, if I got enough. If I can't, uh, if I don't have enough, uh, for the whole microbiology assay, I will just stack more. Uh, uh, try to get like 15 mix or more. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this one, I, I've i managed to make it. Uh, but uh, because it was potentially labile, uh, so I quickly put it through the guan relation step. Uh, everything all in. Because I got the conditions right, so I can easily remake these uh, before shipment. And so uh, next time I'll probably make a TFA sort to, to make sure it's uh, properly protected. Uh, and this one, uh, I've made the bulk versions of it. Uh, it's in, currently in the progress of debug. Uh, shouldn't be that much difficult, but uh, uh, a little bit messy things coming out. Uh, Alongside the LMS monitoring, so uh, I'll be a bit careful with this structure later on, just to make sure things are coming out quite clean. Uh, these these two are still waiting because uh, once I got the conditions right for these two, and uh, I'll just apply the same conditions for for the, the for the rest of these. Uh, and these are currently waiting for shipment. Uh, once I finish, uh, targeted by. 20, 23rd, 24th, or 25th to Adrian this month. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, the remaining targets, <clears throat> and the remaining targets are still these compounds. Uh, it's all about uh, uh, coupling, uh, SNAR or awkwards or <clears throat> some other conditions uh, still in the uh, still in progress. I'm still trying these things. Uh, yeah, that that's basically all the chemistry. I got. Are, are we getting these amines as salts, or are we getting them as the free base? Uh, you mean these amines? Yeah. These these amines are uh, salts. Salts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it quickly oxidizes. Uh, after 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 uh, evap uh, evaporation. Uh. That's why that's why I, I have to stay that sort. All of these. Yeah. Um the oxidized product of that, 
I mean, was nitro. Yeah. Uh, is that? I mean, you've already sent some of these compounds that that may well have happened too. Um, I'm just thinking, is that a bit of extra SAI if that were a nitro group? Yeah, I was. I was thinking. Uh, I was about to just put the structures in because. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because why not? I, I've seen some uh, antibiotics also have nitro nitrous in it, uh, and some other drugs. So I th I think it, it it might just be worthwhile uh, uh worth trying. Yeah, I will. I will definitely. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Lovely. Thanks, you, Han. It's great. Yeah. Um. Does anyone else have something to contribute? Lily, would you want to share some information on Tommy and yeah, Olivia's can, progress? Uh, yeah, I can show the Olivia compound structure only. Um, uh, I'm going to share it. Uh, can you see my slides? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so these are the four uh, four compound. We uh, so, so about three compound we already made it and it's purified. They are ready to send. And uh, the, this methoxic um, metamethoxic compound is uh, we are purifying it and it will be uh, ready by end of this uh, week. So uh, Olivia and me uh, uh, make four of this compound. And uh, Sam is, I think Sam also have uh, two or three compound, uh, which uh, which have a slightly different structure, which have a tertiary nitrogen uh, at these places. And, and so at, at this point, we have uh, around six compound to send to you. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I mean, uh, that's the only update I have. Thank you. Yeah, I just add that the compounds that Lily was mentioning with um, an extra nitrogen on that right hand ring. Can you point Lily for me, yeah. please? Yeah, mm. I think yeah, I think, yeah. I think yeah. it's there. Yeah, yeah. Um, those ones are proving to be challenging from a purification point of view, um, and also the starting material seems to be reacting with one of the solvents. So there's a little bit of optimization that's kind of also going on in the background, um, but hopefully uh, they should be close to kind of cracking that. So we'd love to be able to send kind of a few different compounds that look sort of similar, but, you know, maybe just with, um, uh, you know, a series of match compounds so that we can actually start to figure out whether or not that nitrogen actually does anything in terms of uh, solubility enhancements, but also um, if it impacts binding at all. Yep. So TBD, but these should be coming your way at the end of uh, this semester, which is about in the next like three, four weeks, I think we'd aim to ship them. Yes. So are these, these are derived from some of the enemy library hits. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I forget the actual numbers. I think there was an, there was a maybe M06. M08. M08. Yeah, the, yes. So, um, yes, that's, that's their origin. They're a little bit, they're structurally a little bit different. Um, the NH that you see in kind of the, the link of the aniline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, Lalit, can you point? the NH, perfect. Uh, thank you, that's uh, actually sulfur in the original um, hit. Uh, and then there's also like a pyridine with a carboxylic acid. Um, so we've tried to sort of simplify the structure just a little bit, um, adding heteroatoms to see if that will also help from a crystallography perspective. Um, but yeah, that's kind of our rationale for these. Okay, so they should be more stable because if I remember the comment was made at the time that with the sulfur there, that was a potential leaving group. Yes, right I, do, I think I recall that also. 
The sulfur also would be a site for easy oxidation by air as well. So you'd yeah. end up with sulfoxides and so on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would compliment uh, Lalit and the students working on this because this was based upon uh, the literature was from a not necessarily a high rate journal. So they've actually had to do a lot of you know, going back and looking at what the conditions are for this. And Laurie mm -hmm. didn't mention that, but they, but this Lalit and the students have had to really go in and look at what's what's happening in this, and that they've come out with these series of compounds already with the with the dimethyls and the cyclohexyl and the with the nitrogen in it has been a significant tour de force so far, and the, they're going to be able to put out a series of compounds which might give some uh, SAR or be able to provide a, a compound that for crystallography, I think it'll really be quite helpful. Mm. Yeah, that'd be good. Well, definitely. Yeah, good. Hey, it just, just it, for, for, for those, those of us who can't remember chemical structures in our minds, it would, it would be handy uh, just to keep the progenitor compound series in there, just as a FYI. Um, so we Understood. Coming from that, would be lovely. Thank you. Well done, team. Good. Uh, any more from anybody? Uh, well, I could share the, uh, the chemistry, the compounds that I sent to Lord uh, a couple of weeks ago to be tested against the TB uh, light gases. So just everyone will be on the same page. Uh, let me just quick open here. Uh, can everyone see? Mm, yes. Yeah. So yeah. So basically, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I finished the first series of compounds that uh, uh I was designed for TB. Basically, uh, as you can see, it's a uh, it's a uh, analog for, from one of the enamine compounds that uh um you was just uh. Uh, presenting in the in the previous presentation, and uh, I try to keep the um, kinazolina uh, uh, scaffold basically, and uh, the modifications on the leptide sand, uh, basically uh, in attempt to improve uh, solubility and also uh, the lipophilus of the compounds, because uh, for TB you would need uh, uh, a higher lipophilus compared to gram positive and gram negative uh, antibiotics. So that was the the, the rationale for this uh, first series. So there's a uh, TK16, 15 compounds, as you can see. And um, maybe it's actually could be worth it trying to test against the uh, bacterial ones, uh, Marlegase as well, because some of the compounds I sent quite a lot. So maybe just give it a, give it a shot. They're quite similar to uh, the ones from Enamine. So would be interested to have a better uh, uh, SAR in the future, right? So yeah, these are just some of them. And uh, I'm currently working um, in a few other analogs. Uh, yeah, but first we need, of course, the, the data from the uh, initial screening, and then we see what, is, what we're gonna do next. Yeah. Great. I know this work doing MIS. <laughs> Like, yeah, I was, I was thinking that. Uh, how, how much of the compound did you send along? Uh, uh, depends on the compounds, uh, but roughly uh, five, uh, seven milligrams of each one. Some of them just two milligrams, but some of them, there's quite a lot. Okay. I mean, relatively a lot. Yeah, and the synthesis is not that difficult. So in case you need more, I can just go back to the lab and make some of them. Okay. Well, yeah. Well. Well, because from the bacteria, it might be just worth just to be MICs instead. Yeah, but we're just thinking that we could, uh, yeah, just get it into the bugs. Uh, I'll coordinate with uh, Jenny. Jenny. Yeah. Yeah, I think it would be interesting. That's quite a, quite a, yeah. uh, a different uh, variety of compounds. So, could be interesting to have uh, expanded SAR in the future. Yeah. yeah, the the new team member we've got uh, coming uh, when she starts in August, Colette, she's a, a chemist, a microbiologist, and a biochemist, and she's uh, Cat3 trained, so she's mm -hmm. not 
lifetime working with mycobacteria tuberculosis. Yeah. So when we get to it, we can get into our cat free facility. Yeah. We make some progress. So that's all doable. That would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Although we, we could before then look at smegmatis. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have yeah. smegmatis yeah. in the lab. Um, yeah, but you can do that in macrophage models so we don't have to go mm -hmm. straight into mice. Mm. Good. Hey. Uh, uh, we've been loitering enough for Matt to come. He's not come. Um, if, uh, if anyone else has... Nothing. I'm just wondering whether we want to have a little bit of a chat about how to make this work more effectively as a grouping or what do we need to do to you know, bring more people in if we need more people in. Uh, where we might go for more money to support it, etc. So it can just an open discussion about how OSA Merlin gazes works really. Anyone has any thoughts, ideas? Yeah, I don't have a ton of thoughts. I have a, well, I guess I do have a couple of thoughts. There's one, I was curious, you know, MERF, right? Is Who's working on MERF? Um, uh, well, no one. It's just, it's just the point. It seemed a bit of a shame, uh, given we have things against CD&E not to actually see whether the relationship extended any further. So, which is why I've done it. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know if that would be a way of expanding or like in terms of in terms of grant strategy, I think I know Lori's pushing something. Uh I don't know where that's at. Um I don't that know. That one we 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 pitched an R uh, uh, an R uh, twenty one, but it needs to be rewritten and sub resubmitted. resubmitted. So um it would be great to maybe kind of get that going for the next cycle, which would be kind of June. Um, yeah, I think it's, what is it, June 5th or 14th or something? Yeah. Um, We're probably in a better position than we were when we applied last year. Yep. Should we organize a meeting just to talk about the R21? That would be grand. Yeah, I'd happily do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Bart, for raising that. So, and Laurie. Um, so, yeah, Adrian, do you want to schedule a series of meetings for those interested and then a timeline of action and key data that we feel we need to make that more robust? Yeah. Okay. Do, do you want me to send an email now to uh, us yeah. or Adrian? Are you going to take that? Well, if you're at the computer now, Laurie, then... I am. Funnily enough, being on Zoom, <laughs> what can't really avoid that one. It's <laughs> uh, uh, very good. Could All be right, a, I'm on it. Could be a mobile phone, of course. No, I'm definitely on a computer. Good very good. Okay, that would be that would be good to do that. Um, um, I tell you a little bit. One. Could do something with MUF and uh, I don't know. Well, I was I I have students, you know that, and I was thinking maybe MUF would be a project that we should look at to see structures or what we yes. could do from an SSGCID perspective. Well, we, yes. we we have active protein um, and assays. Um, which which protein are you? The E. coli protein, or do you have the other ones? Edamonas. We've got strep. Pneumonia, staff, Morris, I think. Okay, um, so you've got a lot. We've even got ceiling color. I think we've got MERF as well. I think I'd have to check that. Of what? MERF. Of E. coli. E. coli. Yeah. So we, should we'll send you an email bar of what we've what we've got. Are you thinking of of starting from cloning expression or would you be happy just to be sent clones? I, I don't know how easy it is to send stuff. If, if you want to send, we can work it out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. could say what we've got in the way of expression constructs. Yeah. Well, expression constructs is always easier mm. than bacteria, for example. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
when is students thinking of starting or when you uh, i was i'm trying to come up with summer projects so all right okay. <laughs> Well, that would be good then. I mean, the brilliant thing about like, <laughs> several projects is it's a word search replace issue. Right. <laughs> Write one and just <laughs> reinsert species or ligase. Yes, and they're for synthetizers, yeah. all 20 of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Cool. No, I think Mira is definitely worth a go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Uh, anyone else? Uh, um, I can I can say something about what I've been up to. Um, the last uh, well, last year I've been spending quite a lot of time trying to develop a, a a bilateral program between UK and Japan around antimicrobials and future leaders in AMR. Um, we have a small amount of money. We got one and a half million pounds out of um, uh, GB Sasakawa Foundation. And um, LifeArc are now partnering with us. Um, that I think they will see how it goes, but they're, they're certainly going to. David Powell at LifeArc is certainly going to help drive with me a, a, a funding round for a future leaders program. Um, I think we're aiming for six or seven million pounds um, uh, across the realm of AMR. So it will be discovery, but science policy as well. So we have uh, a couple of science named science policy fellows. We have a Dame Sally Davis, AMR science policy fellow, and a Mr. Shiozaki, who's a previous Japanese health minister, science policy fellow. They're uh, being recruited at the moment, and their their remit is around how do we reinvigorate uh, funding for antimicrobial discovery uh, in the UK and Japan. Uh, the aim is to expand that globally. Uh, so we're looking at expanding that uh, around Asia, but uh, also for opportunities to do that in the US as well. So we're getting paperwork together. Uh, the UK Japan thing went really, really well. Um, all of the pharmaceutical countries in Japan are desperate for where they will find their next generation of leaders uh, because the whole system has collapsed. Uh, and, you know, people like Shinogi and Meiji and such like are really enthusiastic to support it. So we will be approaching the Shinogi Foundation as well for support. So uh, I, I haven't reached west yet to the US, but I think it will be on, on the agenda. So any, if anyone is passionate about next generation leadership, uh, that includes old people who've got jobs and young people who want jobs, then uh, just uh, let me know. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that's what we can do but the idea is to get a cohort of people together um, who will drive this forward when I'm retired yeah I mean the US is pretty much dominated by, I think by the CARB-X sort of efforts uh, uh, and they're going to so, run out of ideas at some point yeah everyone's getting older and then uh, do you know Terry Romer I do know Terry, yes. Yeah, I would say Terry is always a uh, game for things. Uh, he's, yeah. I would say, if reach out to Terry, um, or if you, or I can, if you know him, I can also introduce you. Yeah, um, yeah, I know Terry and good for weekend calls occasionally with Terry, but I think more, you know, if it would be good, maybe you, you as well, it's always good to have more than one point of contact. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know Jared Silverman fairly well. I keep working on the gates to try and engage. Maybe they might on this area, particularly mm -hmm. Global South leadership, maybe. So I will try again with uh, Terry and Jared around around this. I, I, I have uh, in the past kind of primed um, uh, David Schley and uh, Lynn Silver, Karen Bush, uh, around would they engage in training programs so I think part of this would be find money for high level intensity training programs so that a chemist would come in and you know there'd be training from pharmacologists training from chemists training from policy people training from clinical trials people so the idea would be you had a fellow who would have their own program of research but then they'd be layered on top of that kind of high you know kind of that broad multidisciplinary training that you would have got in a pharmaceutical company that you won't get now because they don't exist. 
about how do you replace that broad level of training and understanding for compound progression and understanding the whole ecosystem for making a medicine uh, that you just don't get in SMEs because they have their one idea and they try and push it and spend all the time getting right. it. So that, that's that's what the thought process is, is and and say life arc David Carroll is brought into this because in a life arc I've seen this and seen the failings in academic drug discovery programs that they get pitched and 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 realize there's a need to upskill academic groups. So one of the projects we've been doing for the last I don't know five or six years has been trying to build outreach with student programs. Um, so through the structured genomic centers, we have got, mm. we've developed probably, I think there's probably, uh, I don't know, maybe eight different instructors, uh, five to eight instructors who are sort of using structure or our structures and helping their students um, sort of write a paper. So they take just a random structure and maybe write like a Actacrist F kind of paper. And so we have the, an, we have a program um, with the different colleges, uh, a couple, uh, especially the historically black colleges in the US um, are really sort of out there looking for training opportunities. And I think that that these this particular network of instructors would be a pretty good place to talk to if you're looking for, you know, trying to integrate training and stuff. And I also know that you know, NIAID is actually was really interested in the, like, we kind of just did it because we wanted to do it. And then it just turned out that they um, were pretty interested in how, how it was going forward mm. and really supported it. And actually, at first, it wasn't funded separately, but then they um, built it in, you know, sort of put it in as part of our contract that they're, that they're supporting the work financially mm. um, as part of the structural genomics project to incorporate training and outreach to colleges hmm. um, and so we'd love to figure out a way to span that collaborate with that uh, in some way um, that, that I don't great. know I don't know how that could work together but they're always looking you know uh, they're always looking you know the maybe in terms of chemistry you know compounds to soak and or co-crystallize with structures hmm. like Mm. Um, mm. I think that be uh, that is interesting, but I, I, I guess I, I, there, there will never be one network. There's never going to be one king of the hill for AMR. But no, no. how to integrate activities and part of what was going through my mind was that there'll always be kind of core programs where you have a core interest in what you're wanting to do. But how do you how do you blur the edges and enable others to you know participate and you know, having mobility money to attend training and be able to do virtual training, that's not as good, but, you know, it's possible to have you record and curate training in a bibliography that's widely available. Uh, so, you know, I started getting together a list of all the different groups that I could think of around the world. This is a new one uh, to add to the list. Uh, so if you wanted to send me details, that'd be good. You know, Guard P and such like, you know, they they have an interest in this also. You know, so how do you, how do you how do you how do you get a co you know an international cohort of individuals who can get to know each other you know as potential future leaders and can talk mm -hmm. to each other and share resources because there is never enough resource in this sphere you know and do what we do what what we're doing now effectively in a number of different areas uh, whether it's small molecules large molecules bacteriophage whatever it is That's and then I think also in the structural genomic centers in general, both, you know, the one I represent and the other one that's funded by NIAID would be mm. uh, super uh, supportive in terms of with the UK Japanese chemistry based mm. consortium, you know, doing structures for targets, you know, that's sort of our, our mandate. We'd love to actually, you know, be part of that. Um, and then we come with our own funding so you don't have to spend no money on that you just need to request targets yeah, uh, yeah. from us so, so right so that that's an important part of what we were doing with uk japan it, it's it's integrating academic industry and national infrastructure so it's, right. le it's better leveraging so for us it's you know diamond light source and you know riken spring eight 
for example, how, how do we use the real-time team experience, real-time crystallography and serial crystallography experience that they've got for these kind of mm -hmm. programs. But yeah, integrating what you do as well, Bart, and that structural dynamic side in the US would be great. I'll just need to get my head around. Perhaps I'll have an offline conversation with you how to how to do that and who to pop, you know, how to start populating things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that offline with you. Okay. Great. Anything else for anybody? I think that's it. That's it. <clears throat> uh, great. Um, I'm pass on the good news to Matt that we managed to get through this without him uh, <laughs> successfully. And uh, it's good to see everybody. And uh, I think some useful input. Uh, thank you all for the input. Uh, those who are doing the work, uh, those who are just talking. Uh, um, and um, yeah, I think there's some good progress and some good ideas. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, look forward to the grant application details, sorry, I'll follow up with Bart, and we'll keep chemistry coming. We'll do what we can do here to support yeah. you. Good. Sounds good. Thanks very much, everyone. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.